the architects, the architects behaving as artists, I guess, that, that would be the, uh, where the artists and architects can't be artists. Or, uh, well, it's been really interesting listening to you guys have this conversation. <laughs> um, at, in, in part because there's a, um, you, your opening gambit was, I don't remember, somebody will help me with remembering exactly the words, but I think it was, unlike other artists, you do X. So you just, so it wasn't a question. And, and I suppose for me that's the question. Like, is it a question or what kind of question is it? Whether, whether you, you call somebody an artist or not, and what are the signals and what are the stakes of that. I wouldn't, I wouldn't, so, and I, I wouldn't start off with any suppositions about that, I guess, because I think that that, you know, if you were to open it up very broadly, maybe that's, that's the question. Where is, is there a line between architecture and art? If you were to try to put this, I mean, it's also interesting, even though we know, like the architects in the room, know that there are very specific architectural references all over the place. Um, all of the figures that you've mentioned have been artists, except that your technical vocabulary, the archipelago, the model, the da 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 da, has been architectural. So if you were just to like parse the conversation, you would find categories of things that are being assigned to a kind of architectural problem, an art problem, etc. And I'm not sure where those, how you guys are thinking about where those lines get drawn. Although you, you both seem to think that they have a lot to do with lines getting drawn and edges and canvases and I mean it's also sort of interesting because I I wouldn't have thought that artists today would really be talking so much about canvas placement you know that it's a very it's a very particular definition of art rooted in a particular moment I suppose I, I just wanted to maybe just a completely different thing because this was also part of our conversation um, but just because I'm going to forget later. Um, so to Jai, can, are we, can we say Jai and Jai like, as people? Is that, or is that just the name of the gallery? You can say Jai and Jai as people. As people. Because <laughs> where are you guys as people? Did they go away? Where's, where's Jai and Jai? Are they not here? Weren't they just here a minute ago? Yeah. 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 Can we grab them? Because um, I wanted to ask them some stuff. Well, okay. Well, I guess I won't be able to ask them because I mean I think one of the one of the issues is the institutional frame. So you, so you were call, calling a lot of attention to the room, and I think that we could definitely have an interesting conversation about like the scene in the room and why. Things actually tend not to break the scene in the room. So yeah. this would be like this would be a moment. So hi guys. <laughs> <laughs> well, I kind of didn't really need to put you guys on the spot. No, it's just that I see Andrew back there, and and I just wanted to say with everybody here that I just think it's like super great that you have this place. Thank you. And I think it's really. Um, playing an important role in, in uh, articulating concerns of an emerging generation. And, um, and I think that's fantastic, and I really applaud uh, your super experimental uh, uh, way of doing things. Um, I don't know how you fucking make any money, because like, I don't know what's for sale. And I guess that's really, for me, this is a really important question, because one of the things that, one of the ways that we would understand the difference between an architect and an artist is it economically and institutionally, artists don't provide services. Architects do. Uh, the gallery is a strange kind of service. Uh, I, I asked you where, whether you were selling anything, and, and there was no, there's no selling apparatus, right? There's no little red dots. I mean, I don't know, do you have little red dots? Have you even gotten to the point where you have little we red have, dots? We have with past exhibitions, and this one we're working on it cur currently. Uh -huh. And it's a, it's a great question I think everyone wonders at, about um, this is what we do full time. 
Um, when we work with our exhibitors, we understand that it will um, take time for their career as an artist to grow. Um, so it's a long-term investment in um, how we view what an entity of a gallery is, especially with the intersection that we have between art and architecture. Um, we have a very close tie to architecture, obviously. Um, with the emerging architects coming out, there is just a lot of work to um, either sell as a commodity or get out there to share as ideas, um, both realms. But at the same time, um, it just it takes time to uh, not to use this word, but tell people about what we're doing. Um, so it's word of mouth. It's just patience, a lot of patience, and a lot of um, this kind of rigor and just over and over and over again. And this conversation is something that we find extremely important because it sheds some light on what kind of work this is, where does it lie and along the spectrum, especially to perhaps collectors who are looking to collect this kind of work that we curate. And if they don't know about it, if they don't um, hear anything about it, then they don't know about it. They just don't know anything about it. So, um, And Jimenez has been actually an exhibitor, as well as another artist who's here, who rides that line really perfectly between our mission statement as a gallery amongst the other entities out there. So, But to answer your question, yes, everything in here is for sale. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> sort of the art historical vocabulary that you were using before, we're, we're looking at a lot of pictures with no frame. And that a huge effort has been invested into the idea of the frameless image, which means the image without, a, without an edge, without a limit in some kind of way. And which is a really, you know, there are many different ways to, to push that question. but it, it seems to me that nevertheless it's important to acknowledge that there, there, there are other kinds of frames and the gallery is a frame and the institution of the gallery is a frame. And <coughs> looking at Heather, um, you know, whose show opened last night at the Sci Art Gallery and thinking about the difference between that gallery and this gallery, I'm, I will not embarrass you with this question, um, uh, which is to say you don't have to answer the question. Um, but, you know, I, I'm not sure that there is an architect around who gets involved in things like an exhibition or like a young architects program who doesn't end up funding it largely themselves. So, you know, so I, I'm not going to ask how much money did you lose, um, but I'm but I'm but I'm going to assume that you that you did lose some and. Uh, <laughs> or maybe even a lot. I'm just curious about those things, because I, I think that when we talk about the difference between art and architecture in this day and age, we really have to be understanding, at least in part, that is not a distinction based on medium. It's not a distinction based on discourse and tradition. It, it's, a discourse, it's, it's a distinction based on in money. And I don't know. Is that like a bummer to say out loud? No, 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 no. I have a neighbor who's a, a, a pretty established art collector, and she was looking at the poster for the inside of the city. And she said, why in the world would you call your piece an architecture, a series of architectural objects? You simply needed to call it sculpture, and you could sell it. And, she, and she's right. I mean, I basically made the piece. I, I took away any potential value in how in, in associating it with a discipline other than sculpture, fine art. Or, so I mean, I'm interested in how Jimenez is kind of handling being at, at the boundaries of those two disciplines, and hopefully, I hope you're more savvy than someone like me who chooses the wrong word for what to call it because. It, because the financing of it is a big deal. 
But you could fold it back in. So, so let's say I decided, you know, I'm going to buy that one. Um, so this would be another way of asking what is integral to the piece. And so it, so well, if you looked at a Donald Judd, you, you, you don't get to just buy one, right? <laughs> right? <laughs> you know, and say, can I do, can, you know, there, there, there are 18 of those squares. If I only buy one, can I just save 17% or whatever? <laughs> My math is all there. I'm not an architect. I can't figure out the numbers at all. But, right? But, uh, <laughs> but so, so what, so what happens if that's not, because this is back to your, a little bit, your question, like the figures on the wall are kind of getting out of the way to, uh, as, I, as I imagine it, right? These, these things are scattered. You have a kind of, like, an, like, a flea, like a flea market of architectural potentialities that are scattered. But they're not Pollock. They're not continuous, right? They, they're, they're figured by the imposition of these figures. So if you take them away, is that like a loss to the whole? Do you understand my question? Um, well, the, the kind of commodity answer to that question, I think uh, John Jai came up with the number uh, of this room. Uh, <laughs> she said that, yeah, she, she, she told me this afternoon, if somebody wanted to buy this room as a room, uh, yeah, there's a number to it. 500,000. Yeah, but so, but are you selling it as a room? If there's a buyer out there that wants to buy the whole room, yes. But are you still going to strip the, the canvas? Question, if the strip. question would be, you know, do we? No. Okay, so then the question is this: You got no buyer for the room. Let's say there's no buyer for the room, mm -hmm. but I'll buy one. Like, would you sell it? Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Well, so this would is. Would you sell it? Would you sell it? I think it's up oh, to her. Oh, I see. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Huh. Mm -hmm. I mean, That's what I'm saying. So Donald Judd would say no, right. like that would not be possible. So I'm so so. Does that feel like a violence to take that away? I'm just trying to understand what is the whole. Uh -huh. So we don't, we don't have a frame. We mm -hmm. so I mean, the market is a kind of frame, but the market turns out to be weirdly flexible, and so it's not very useful as a frame in any traditional sense. Mm -hmm. So Andrew like brings the market in when he does the, right, wouldn't you say, Andrew, that you're, some of the work that you have done here with the flea market aesthetic, et cetera, is also addressing this in some way, or? Yeah, I mean, I think it's a, a, a nice question, like with the Donald Judd, like, I, it would be great if you could just buy one instead of <laughs> buying them. Um, but, you know. Or no, maybe it wouldn't be great, it would just be cheaper. It would be cheaper. <laughs> yeah. but, I mean, I, 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 I think the, the question is like, um, when you do take one of these canvases off, and it's no no longer part of the whole room, like that's that's an interesting question between Jimenez and the gallery owners. That's who who decides that, I think. So I, I, I don't I don't really know if uh, I mean because. Then I look at some of the canvases that say go over two surfaces. Does that mean that you know when I put that in my house or somewhere else that I have to put it that way, or can I just you know put it on its side or you know up against a wall? So like, I, I think Jimenez wants to sell the whole room. <laughs> no, I, yeah. yes, yeah. yes. Uh, well, I suppose it's also in keeping with everything that maybe there the desire is to sell the whole room. But the willingness is to sell it piece by piece, mm -hmm. and I, I, and and I think that in a previous era, I mean, I think this is where the Donald Judd thing is not a useful comparison, or it's a useful comparison only because it helps articulate a difference between that and now, which is that Donald Judd had a notion of the whole, even though it was made of parts. And it seems to me that I'm not sure what we can think of as a whole here. I mean, that's really why I was bringing it up, the frame and the limit, et cetera. It's not really clear to me that we think of uh, objects with the same kind of, um, uh, uh, what is the word that they use for um, 
object consistency. I think that that's the that's the psychological term, right? So for for children who are young children, object permanence. Object permanence thank you. Um, I don't think that we think of things in relation to object permanence um, uh, that way anymore. So it's a so it's a, a little bit of a false question, but it that when you started off quoting your website. So uh, I was also like really, I, I, mean, I didn't do my homework. I, I, didn't know I, was supposed, I didn't know I was supposed to read the website before I came. But that also means, like how did you know you were supposed to read the website? Um, I didn't know where this place was. So I was to this ghost and I was like, oh, let's look this up. And what was interesting, I read the description and I thought, what would you call that? I had this sort of same dilemma when I was thinking about the questions, and the only thing I could think of is artist statement. And then I looked up best ways to write an artist statement. <laughs> and these are the 10 things you're supposed to do if you want to get your art sold. Um, and so, like, this is this is different. I guess I didn't do my homework. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I suppose it's just another way of saying, like, where does the piece begin? Mm -hmm. So, if it begins on the, the what, I mean, part of what you were, uh, I would have thought that an artist statement, in the sense that you're saying, is a is a sim is simply a supplement. Right. It's not actually implicated in the piece itself. But given what the way you presented it, one might say the piece started there. So if it started there, then this is another part of it. And the, I mean, I just I think that that's really sort of what's interesting about it is this super flexibility in what is what is an object and what its limits are. So when you start to look around at this as a as a set of architectural uh, drawings, they flicker in and out of dimensions. Right? So it's, you're looking at something, you're thinking you're looking at it in depth, but it shares a line with something else that is actually flipped in the other direction. So there's an incredible lack of yeah, uh, uh, permanence in uh, in the although the lines are permanent and the position of the pieces are, is permanent, they seem to be describing a, a kind of um, universe in which things are don't have object. I think consistency Constancy. is also constancy. I think. Yeah. No. Um, I'm thinking of what I'm trying to remember what I read about this. My students here will know that I'm constantly forgetting things and making them go back to the library for me to figure out what it is that I read a thousand years ago. But there is something uh, leading up to that, that the thing becomes consistent before it becomes permanent, that it, it has a kind of elasticity at the beginning and then finally it settles into permanence. And, and there is some technical vocabulary for describing that. Um, and I, I think it's really interesting to think of this as a, as a kind of new primitivism, which is to say a regression back into an, uh, a kind of psychological state before things have permanence and consistency, which gives them maybe a sort of, you know, a kind of potential, a potentiality that we wouldn't normally ascribe to architecture and its, you know, fixed nature. I mean, also kind of, uh, as you're talking, I was, I was thinking about the, the role of relics. Relics? Yeah, relics in churches. I mean, you know, it's a valuable piece of object that's been maybe taken from a person. Um, a piece of a person, for example, a piece of a skull would be worth, like, I mean, they even rank the, you know, level of relics. Uh, if you had the skull of St. Mark himself, that would be level one, if somebody sneezes on something, and a piece of cloth would be level three or something. Um, but those are, but it, the relic is such a great um, thing to bring up in this context because there is no more inconsistent an object than a relic. So um, you know that if they took all of the bones of relics of St. Mark that they have around, you'd have St. Mark would be like this, the size of the Empire State Building. You know, they're just like all, that. They, they, you know, the thousands and thousands of bits of the, of the, of the cross of Christ. So, you know, this thing like proliferates and multiplies. It has, you know, so the image of it is more fixed than the object itself. 
to the commodity of Saint Mark as an mm -hmm. idea, uh, uh, you know, as scattered objects, you know, just piles of Saint Mark. Yeah, like he sat on this chair, and therefore it's part of Saint Mark. Um, and what becomes valuable is the making of Saint Mark, not necessarily Saint Mark. So, if you were to, uh, maybe one question um, about the the valuation of the objects could be, and I don't know how you feel about this. Is what would be sort of devalued if you if you sold off to go in the sort of architecture side? If you sold off piece by piece, right? There is the value of, of money. Um, but I, I'm wondering what you would, do you have a problem with that? Or what would you lose? Does it matter to you? 